pen creation has fascinated me for a while now. I mean, what goes into making something like this or like this? Well, recently I had a chance to sit down with the creator of this very pen and ask her a couple of questions about what goes into making a pen. How do you do it? And how do you find the right people to help you along the way? So I'm gonna get into that in a minute, but first I wanna give you a close up of these pens so you can kind of get an idea of the quality of this particular pen creator. Her name is Disney Chris. She's the first fantasy Disney pen creator that I have dealt with. I have three of her pens, so I'm gonna show you close ups of those right now. So I'm gonna start with this pen here. This is a Beauty and the Beast Christmas pen that I picked up. It was one of the first pens that I purchased from her. It is a really nice large pen. There are no noticeable paint strokes or anything in it. You of course have Lumiere and Cogsworth down here and there's Beast and Belle is making a snowman. It's just a really gorgeous pen. She even went through the detail of giving this snow back here a different color. It's completely smooth, rather thick. And on the back here, you have two pen posts and engraved is the name of the pen as well as the LE. Now to give you a comparison between this and an actual Disney pen, I have my Dalmatians pen here. Now, if you look at the Dalmatian pen, you can see the strokes of the enamel there, which I don't have on this pen. So sometimes that is the case. It all depends on the creator, but I have found that some of the Disney fantasy pens are actually a better quality than the authentic Disney pens. So, and as a size comparison, because this is a pretty good size pen, it is about as tall as my Beauty and the Beast pen, but the Beauty and the Beast is much wider here. So the next pen I want to show you is the second pen that I ordered from her, which is this Bell pen. Oh, we're gonna zoom out so you can get a better shot of the whole thing here. So, this pen is a pen on pen element. It has Belle in a different style dress, just slightly, with these engraved roses in the background, which are absolutely gorgeous. And then, of course, you have this outer pen frame element that has Lumiere and Cogsworth, and it's just the roses up there. It's an absolutely stunning pen. And again, you can kind of see how thick that pen is in comparison to this one. So your traditional Disney pen, well actually it would be it opened. So we're talking that width versus this width. Now this one does not have the LE engraved on the back or the name, but an absolutely gorgeous pen. Now these pens come in a specially designed bag that protects them in shipping and everything. And these bags are absolutely gorgeous as well. And just a really nice little touch. Now, not every Dizzy pen creator does this, but she does. And the last pen that I have gotten from her is what's called a top pen. So this is an aerial pen, obviously, and it's really, really huge and gorgeous and has everybody on it. But you have four pin posts on this one. This pin is actually supposed to go on to another pin and it's a pin and pin element but she had some extras of just this portion of the pen, and so she sold just this portion. It was cheaper than getting the full pen, and I liked it just as much, so I went ahead and got that instead. She has a couple that I have my heart set on getting one day, but they are not cheap. <laughs> so 
But again, just a really gorgeous pen. And it also came in a custom bag with the art on it to protect it. So without further ado, let's get into that interview. All right, guys, I have Disney Chris here with me today, and I have a couple of questions for her. So you've been doing pens for quite a while. Um, how did you first get into pens? Um, so collecting pens. Um, did you start collecting first before you started designing? I did. So my family started collecting pins back in 2000. Uh, we were, we used to go to the parks at least once a month. We're here in Arizona, so it's a quick little drive over there. So we started collecting pins in like around year 2000. Um, we kind of left around 2004. I was getting to that like teenage age where it just wasn't <laughs> cool anymore. So we all just kind of stepped away. And um, then back in um, 2000, I graduated in December 2017 from college. I uh, went to Disney World that following uh, January and I saw pins were still alive. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then I started finding on, there were Facebook groups and I was like, oh, I have a lot of old pins. And I found all these Facebook groups and like people trade online. That sounds sketch, but then I did it and fell <laughs> in love. And I have been immersed in it ever since. So early 2018 is when we came back. That's awesome. Yeah. So did you have a, like a particular, um, pen genre or anything that you really liked? Like, Oh, totally. I had a ton of Beauty and the Beast pins, a ton of Little Mermaid pins. Um, my dad loved all Mickey's. So we had a lot of Mickey <laughs> pins and then a ton of random stuff. Cause you know, when you're a kid and you're collecting, you just, right. Everything, everything that's shiny. Yep. <laughs> do you still collect or do you mostly design now? We do. Um, I have a pretty large Beating the Beast collection. Um, I have a little Onward collection because that's like my new favorite movie. Oh, yeah, that one's so cute. <laughs> and then I got my husband into it um, in 2018. So he has a Toy Story and a Star Wars, a Frank and Weenie collection. And then, of course, we have small little things here and there. Right? <laughs> it's out of control. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you make the jump from loving pens and collecting them to actually designing them yeah so we um I started like to get rid of some of my old pins that I no longer wanted and to move into collecting new pins because I didn't have like a a lot of resources to go and buy a bunch of new pins because I had no idea how expensive pins had gotten when I had gotten back in um, I started selling off my old collection to buy new pins and once I started diving more into that I had to create Instagram. And once I had created the Instagram, Disney Chris, I saw all the fantasy pins. I had no idea what <laughs> fantasy pins even were. And then, you know, my mom and I kind of fell in love with them. And um, in the summer of 18, we kind of were just like, well, we could do, try this. Like, why don't we try this? And so we did, and my sister did the art. So we created the Princess in the Park pin. So it's our oh. very first pin we ever made. It's huge. It's four inches. It's three millimeters. Um, and my sister did the art. My mom oh. kind of consulted on the design and uh, my mom and I manufactured them. And uh, we learned a whole lot, but <laughs> we just, <laughs> we had noticed that like there were, there was so much artistry in the, in the fantasy pin world. And we're all creatives. Like me and my sister, we grew up acting in musical theater and my sister's also an artist and my mom has always been creative in anything she's ever done. She used to, you know, have an art gallery. Like, oh, wow. It's just something that was kind of a natural next step for us once we kind of figured out what the model was and how it was and what fantasy pins even were. Because when you're new into the community, fantasy pins, you're like, oh, no, what's a fantasy pin? And then right. once you get one, you just go, go in fully. Right. Because they're so, so pretty and there's so many different ones. And the ones where people like cross things from different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So creative. So what are some of the things you learned making your first pin? Uh, you know, we had no idea. So we learned about like how to communicate with the manufacturer. What are, what do like the terms even mean? Like three millimeter versus two millimeter versus 
uh, hard enamel, soft enamel, translucent, pearlescent, pearl, like there's so many different <laughs> effects you can do. Um, how to edit art, how to, uh, just there, how to, um, edit and match color and do all the different, um, Pantone colors. It's just, there are so many things that go into making each individual pin that right. um, we had no idea. You know, we thought, you know, you send off the, the picture to the manufacturer, you answer a couple of questions and then a month later you get your pins and were we wrong? <laughs> <laughs> When you make your pens, do you and your sister and your mom make the artwork all the time? Or do you have to hire that out? Or how does that work? So my sister did the Princess in the Park series. Mm -hmm. And then she's super busy with her work. Um, so she kind of took a step back from the art. But since then, we have been hiring and commissioning artists to do all of our work. My mom and I are not artists in that way, like with our hands. We're artists in the creative, but we are not artists uh, with our hands. So right. um, we commission all of our art. So we have like a, probably about uh, anywhere from five to 10 artists that we work with at different times that create art for us. So how do you find artists? Uh, the, the way that I have is either through uh, recommendations that people have given me, like an artist will recommend their other artist friend who is maybe oh, yeah. one for work. Um, we work with a lot of people overseas, so in different countries, that this is their way of making a living. And, and so they reach out to all these pin makers and they suggest their friends and they all get to get this work. Um, but I find them initially through Instagram. I just kind of look up hashtags. I look up tags. I look up anything. And I kind of surf around for people's art who's really interesting. And then I just contact them about commissions. A lot of times artists will have like in their profile that they're looking for commissions or their commission closed. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What type of pens do you typically make? Like hard enamel, soft enamel, just so um, people understand. All of our pins are hard enamel. Um, we don't make any soft enamel pins. Uh, some people consider the translucent effect a soft enamel effect, but it looks like the hard enamel. So right. I just like to say hard enamel. Got it. So can you take us through the process of making that pen? A little sure. Bit manufacturer? Yeah, yeah. So as we kind of talked about before, we'll make the art, we'll give it to the manufacturer, and then, um, then I'll get a piece of art back from the manufacturer. And once I get that back, I then make edits. I say, oh, I want this to be this color, or I want it to be translucent. And then I put in all my effects that I want. And they'll be like, okay, can you give me the Pantone color? So if you're a maker, make sure you buy one of these Pantone color booklets. Um, sometimes you you're manufacturing, you can buy one through them. Sometimes you can go on eBay and bid on them. Um, ask your manufacturer which version they're using to make sure you're on the same page. But it has every single color that you could want and wow. their number equated with it. And they have the exact same thing. So that way you're really communicating about the same colors because what's on the screen is a little bit different on their side than it is our side. So, and what color comes out, like what colors on the screen is different than what's gonna be in your hand on a pin. Right. So it may look, the red might look off, but if you look up the Pantone color and it's the color that you want, then you know when they make the pin, it's gonna be the right color red. So I'd really suggest buying one of these, but you'll edit the art, you'll send it back to them. Sometimes that's like a two, three, four times back and forth process to make right. sure it's absolutely right. Um, all the lines are drawn correctly. Everything that's screen printed is supposed to, like is marked that it's gonna be screen printed so you don't get extra metal lines. Um, all the effects are there, the glitter, the translucence, the pearlescent, the pearl paint, like all that stuff is there, it's marked clearly. And so that you know that what's going into production is exactly right. Then um, the next time you'll get a picture from your manufacturer, sometimes you'll get a picture of the mold, but mostly the next picture you're gonna get is a color sample. And what the color sample will be is the mold of the pin. So uh, just like the metal part of the pin and all the color filled in that's not any type of effect. So just like on this one, the only effects we have on here is the glitter bow. So uh -huh. all the colors would be on it except for that glitter bow. Got so it. they would send us a picture of the pin with everything filled in, but the sections that have effects on it. 
So then you'll double check, okay, does that match the colors that I want? Does it match the art or all the metal lines there? Is everything right? And if it's once you've gone back and forth and you've made the color corrections you wanted, then it goes to the next where they mass produce all the color. So then it'll take probably a week before you'll get another update on that pin, sometimes two weeks. They'll mass produce all the color. So all 75, all 100 of your pins have the color in them. Mm -hmm. Then the next step is they will plate it with the gold or whatever color you're going to do. Most of ours are gold. So they'll plate it with gold and then they'll send you a picture again. So you get to see the color with the gold. And then, um, then usually you approve because there's been no change. Right. You approve it and then they put in all the color effects. So the translucent, the stained glass, the pearl paint, anything like that. They'll put in all the effects. Um, then again, you do the same thing. They send it to you. You're like, okay, I love that glitter. I like the style of that glitter, but it needed to be this color. Or I like the pearl essence perfect, but the translucent's not good. And then you again, go through the whole process of them remaking the sample, sending it to you, remaking the sample, sending it to you. Once it's approved, it's exactly what you want. They mass produce all those colors. Then you'll wait another week, two weeks. You'll get a picture with the um, screen print. Mm -hmm. And then again, you kind of go over, is the screen print? Is it all in the right place? Is it the right colors? And then once you've approved that, then your pin, uh, they mass produce it and then your pin is done. And they ship it to you, which um, depending on your manufacturer, a lot of people do FedEx two-day shipping and then other people do um, by ship, by boat. Mm -hmm. So it takes like two weeks to get to you. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Right? Crazy. Yeah. But that's our, that is the crazy pin making process. <laughs> So do you get those different, like I've seen um, framed ones of official Disney pens where they have all the different stages. Do you guys get that too? Well, no, the answer is no. They don't automatically give it to you, but we did actually just order a couple of progression sets Ooh. that uh, we haven't 100%. We had ordered them for the charity event. Uh -huh. um, but they did not come in time because things are crazy right now in right. China and mail. Like that two-day shipping that I was talking to you about is sometimes taking up to two weeks right now because right. there's just not enough planes going out of China to get it, yeah. to get it here in time. So um, we, it didn't arrive in time. So uh, we're not sure what we're going to do with them yet, but um, <laughs> we're really excited. So we do have a couple of progression sets. We got, um, for those of you who follow us, we got a uh, Merida Inc a Mulan ink and the Harry Potter year one and two. So we have four oh. sets. We're not sure what we'll do with them yet, but um, we'll do something with them for sure. Right? Yeah. This will be awesome. But people so, can, you definitely can get them. If you're putting your pins in production, just ask, say, I also want a progression set. And if your manufacturer doesn't know by name, just explain what you're wanting and they'll save one of each step for you and ship it with your pins. Got it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So typically, how long does it take when, to, from the time that you have that idea about a pin to get it to the point where you do pre-production or pre-sales, sorry, that's what sure, I meant. Yeah. <laughs> and then from pre-sales to getting it to the customer, like what's that kind of timeline? Yeah, well, it depends if it's me or mom. <laughs> <laughs> my mom, she gets an idea. She's already talking to the artist, already has the art made. Like she just... She's right on it. Me, I like to let things kind of steep and you know <laughs> reimagine things in my head. Then I find an artist and we chat about it for a while and we collaborate on art. And then I get it to the manufacturer and I get a picture made and then I pre-sell it. So I'm a little bit slower, um, but that's how I like to create. She gets an idea, like a full concept in her head. Like yeah. she'll see it completely. And I'm the exact opposite. Like I have a concept and I like to work with people and like come up with this idea, but she's like so visionary in it and gets such a, a clear picture of what she wants. And she'll go and she'll get her artist right away on it and she'll get the art made. And then as soon as the art is made, she's usually pushing to get it on our little pre-sale calendar. Um, so yeah. recently things have been a little bit slower getting from art to into pre-sale, but mm -hmm. usually what used to happen was she would come up with the idea, she'd get the art made, we'd be pre-selling it like two weeks later. <laughs> She's just, she's, she works that way. I like to, you know, create and do it with someone else and go back and forth and collaborate on something. Right. She's, she's got it. And then once you have that pre-sale, how long does that take to typically, I mean, every pin is different, obviously. Sure. Yeah. Um, a lot, it depends. So if it's one of our, um, 
if it's one of our series that are done in like a VIP group, we call them. So mm -hmm. in a private group first, like our ink series has its own VIP group and they get access to the pins first. And so they get to do the pre-sales first and then they go to the public. And um, if, if it's in a VIP group, as soon as we have the art done, we typically put it into production because we know it's going to sell because it has that VIP group that wants it. Right. We don't necessarily wait for the pre-sales to make sure it's going to go. Mm -hmm. um, so that will already have been in production. Now, if it's just a brand new pin that we're like, I don't know if anyone's going to like this, we wait for it to pre-sell. Then we put it into production right away, usually within 24 hours of having the pre-sell. We get it into production, paid for, and then production, um, depending on the time of year, because they have busier times of year and slower times oh. of year, um, it'll take anywhere from two to five months. Wow. Okay. But typically ours, ours try to, we try to land in that two, two month period. Right. Um, right now, since they've come back from their new year and their uh, COVID-19 break, yeah. Uh, things are moving super slow and that's across the board with all manufacturers. Things are just so slow right now because they had so much backlogged and then everyone's like, make my pins, make my pins, make my pins. <laughs> so things are slower right now. I think they're more in that like three to five month range. Got it. The pins right now. But uh -huh. if you are constantly communicating and you answer every email as fast as you can, things will move much quicker than if you like wait a couple days, respond to them. And all that stuff. Right. That totally makes sense. As long as you keep those communications open. Absolutely. So how exactly do you find a manufacturer? Uh, that's a really good question. And it is quite the trial and error process. Um, <laughs> sometimes makers will tell you um, if you have a maker that you're good friends with, they might be willing to give you their manufacturer. Um, a lot of manufacturers nowadays have Instagram. Now mm -hmm. it gets a little it's a little sketchy sometimes because they're not allowed to have Instagrams. Um, China, people in China are not allowed to have Instagram and like still right. work. So sometimes their Instagrams disappear overnight and then they come back like a week later. It's, it's kind of, it's goofy in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but you can search Instagram for manufacturers. There's a lot of them on there. I know all of our manufacturers are on Instagram. That's okay. how we communicate mostly with them. Um, but I found our first manufacturers and some that we still work with on Alibaba.com. Oh, right. You can find a lot of manufacturers on there. Um, are all the manufacturers in China? Or are there any in the U.S.? Or how does that work? Um, I have all the ones that we work with and the only ones that I've been able to work with are ones in China. Okay. Yeah. So when you're looking, say, for another fantasy pen, because mm -hmm. I'm assuming that you probably love them as much as everybody else does. Yeah. How do you make sure that that pen creator isn't sketchy? Does that sure. Yeah, like red flags. Yeah. Sure. Um, for people who are buying pins from a creator that maybe they haven't bought from before, um, nowadays a lot of pin creators have a, a support page. And so oh. if they have like the, an update. I know we have one. It's Disney Chris Fantasy Updates. Um, there's a blood bunch of other creators that have created what they call a support page where you can go and see that they have a lot of um, update pictures they're constantly posting so if you see that they post a lot it's probably safe to say that you are, are you're, it's comfortable to buy with them um, okay. yeah I would you know if I have nothing against brand new creators and if you all want to take a chance on them I, I highly suggest you do just watch that PayPal date that's the best thing you can do as a buyer is to watch oh. I believe you have 120 days that PayPal can still refund you. So just watch that PayPal date. Maybe just even put a reminder in your phone 120 days or 110 days from when you bought the pin to make sure that you can get your PayPal refund if you see that there's no um, updates on it. If like you haven't seen an update in 110 days, you might want to just request uh, a refund through the maker. And if they say no, then you can go through PayPal. Or if you uh, want to get a refund from the maker and rebuy it, a lot of makers will do that. Mm -hmm. They'll refund you and let you rebuy it so that you can uh, make sure you're going to get the pin or get your money back through PayPal. But, yeah. you know, I think a good, a good rule of thumb is just if they have that support page or on their actual Instagram page, you see a lot of updates of pins. You're usually pretty safe. Um, they're, they're, then they've had like an established business, then they are keeping people updated. 
Um, if you find that your the maker isn't responding to you or you can't get updates, you know, you always have PayPal as long as you keep up with that, that dead day. Um, keep up with that 120 day mark. Um, you know, seeing people post a lot about people's pins is usually a good indicator that they're pretty solid and they'll they'll get you they'll get you your pins. But um, the biggest thing you can do is just watch that PayPal day because you never know. You know, right. there's been really big creators that have gone down. So just being responsible with your PayPal. Got it. I can promise you that we never will. <laughs> we will never not give pins or not give money back. Right. Yeah, I love your guys's the way you guys just do everything is awesome. Oh, thank you. That's really sweet. So, say someone sees one of your designs and you're sold out of it. Do you have any set ways to help people find those pins, or is it just happenstance? Sure. Um, it depends. I guess it should. I should say it depends pin to pin. Um, sometimes I'll have a couple that I have saved for trades that sometimes I trade people or the best thing people can do is to put it in their story and tag us and, and put ISO on it and we'll repost it. If you tag us and you're not a private account, we're able to repost yeah. it on our story. And then our followers see, oh, that person wants that, excuse me, that person wants that home pin that I want. Um, that I'm that I have, I can reach out to them and trade for it. So if they post it on their story and put in search of on top, I'll repost it for people. Um, they can always reach out and we can try to help. But um, usually if they're sold out, they're long gone. Like we don't have any more. We wish we could help. Sometimes mom has a couple. Um, but, you know, it's 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 pretty rare that we're able to help right away. Do you guys ever do a reprint of a pen or? Just the one print and you're done. Um, the only thing we do is if we get the pin in and there's a significant amount of them flawed, we throw those flawed away. So we've had a couple ink pins come in, like our tattooed series. Oh, yeah. And we've had a couple of those come in and there's about 10 or 15 of them that were ruined. Like we could not sell. We didn't feel comfortable selling. We didn't want a circulation. So we break off the backs and throw them away and like mark them up so no one can take them out of the garbage, which right. has happened before. Not to no us, way. but to a lot of other makers. Uh, I have a friend in Michigan who makes pins and he threw them away and someone found them in the garbage and had them online. Like another pin person, like what are the chances of that? Wow. You know? Um, anyways, but so we break off the backs, we market them up and we throw them away and I reorder those 15 pins. So I get those remade. Okay. But only ever within the LE, we um we never reproduce a pin because it's a limited edition pin, and we've never gone back and done like variants on things mm -hmm. like a different color or something. We just have stayed away from that. We have too many ideas to go back and redo <laughs> other pins. Yeah. So some of your artwork is incredible. Do you ever sell like prints or anything of the artwork? With of course the artist is okay or anything like that. Sure. Um, we have not, I have not, we have not gotten into prints. It's something we've kind of talked about. We've talked about like where we want to move next. Like we've done some diamond paintings recently. We're getting some patches made, um, but we have not moved into prints. I know that some of our um, artists reserve the rights for prints. So um, like Archibald has used, Archibald's one of our artists and he's used the art he's made for us on like bags or, you know, just random stuff. Right. And a lot of times our artists will ask for rights to do some of the stuff, some stuff right. with it. And, you know, we, we don't do a lot of merchandise, so it hasn't, it's never really bothered us to allow right. the artists to do stuff like that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so has it always been like a family affair, like with your mom and your dad? Cause you, you guys do these pen sales where it's everybody's on board. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I, I first started selling my collection and I kind of realized, oh, I really enjoy doing this. And so then I started just buying little things here and there and I would sell them to be able to buy more of the pins I wanted because no one wanted to trade the pins I had for the pins they yeah. had. Uh, you know, it's just, it's so tough that that whole trade situation can be tough. And I wanted these Beauty and the Beast pins. And of course I had no idea at the time what they were worth and value or even what my pins were worth. I had to do a lot of research. 
And so I started kind of like buying and selling some to buy some more uh, pins. And my mom was like, oh, this looks like fun. And she had just, she had not retired, but she had just stopped working in um, our family business stores that we have here locally. And she just kind of had her, uh, gone to like a stay at home. She just did kind of the book work for them and kind of was at home the rest of the time. So she was bored. She was like, well, I want to do it with you. And so we just started doing it, her and I, like uh, our, our first pin sales were like on her bed or at her desk. And like, we're just like, just the two of us um, writing stuff down. It was just a lot of fun, a lot of good memories. And then um, my dad was like, well, what are they doing? Like, <laughs> what are they doing? And my husband has been with me from the beginning. Our, our very first pin sale, which I wouldn't even call it a pin sale. Um, we had pulled down my old board of pins that had been on the board since 2004. <laughs> we pulled it down and we took my phone across and we're like, if anyone wants any of these pins, let me know. <laughs> I probably had like two people watching and I was like, if anyone wants anything, let me know. I'll come up with a price and, or want to trade me. And we just went over the whole board and it was a lot of fun. And um, I probably sold like $30 worth of pins or something like that. It just was it was just a lot of fun. So he's been with me from the beginning, just needing something to do. It was post-grad life for both of us. And we're like, what are we going to do with our lives? And right, we're just trying to figure it out. We had so much downtime. And uh, so then, you know, mom got into it and we're doing it. And then my dad's like, well, what are you guys doing? I love pins. And so then he jumped in and it's been the four of us ever since. And then recently, uh, almost a year ago now, gosh, time flies. We hired my brother-in-law to do all of our packaging. So oh, it's nice. also my brother-in-law the day after that sends all the invoices and um, does all of our packaging and ships it out. He does a really nice job. Like He really does. Nice. I'm very proud of him. He does all of our QC too for all of our pins yeah. that come in. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Do you have any big designs in the works that you want to talk about? Oh, goodness. Big designs in the works um we are we have our um next harry potter um book uh year series coming out so we have done every year we have done like a harry potter um every harry potter year we have done a pin for so we have the fifth year coming out soon uh so that's coming out so people can kind of be looking out for that i think disney mom has a new series in the works we're really excited about mm -hmm. uh I can't give away too many details on that, but it is Disney. And I have a new Harry Potter series I'm working on that we'll be releasing soon. And I'm really excited for, I think, I think people are really going to. I haven't crossed that barrier between Disney and Harry Potter, but you've been tempting me because your pens are really great. Oh, that's so sweet of you. I, uh, our Harry Potter series is probably one of my absolute favorite things that we've done. And yeah. I was not a Harry Potter fan growing up, um, and, but my husband was. So when we got married, I went full on in, and I am now a huge <laughs> Harry Potter fan. I love it. I have yet to, I'm probably going to crush a lot of people by saying this. I have yet to sit down and read the books. No. But I'm going to. I'm going to. It's on my list. It's on my <laughs> list. I definitely want to. Aaron's got them on um, tape for me, too, so I'll be able to read them a little quicker that way. Uh, the audio books are amazing. He does a great yeah. job with all the voices and everything. Yeah, I've been kind of listening to them with him. He'll be playing them all the time. And so I'll catch little parts. But I'm about to dive into the books. I promise, I promise. <laughs> but I became a big fan of the movies and Harry Potter world. <laughs> <laughs> the books are better, but, you know, at least you're a Harry Potter fan and not a muggle. Yeah, that's what Aaron says. The books are better. I need to, <laughs> I need to start. It's been on my list for so long. So... If somebody wants to buy one of your pins, how do they find you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the best way to find us is on Instagram, and that's at Disney underscore Chris with two S's, K-R-I-S-S. -S -S. And that's, that's where you'll find all the information you need. Um, we have a website. It's happiestpinsonearth.com, and you can find all the information on there as well. Awesome. So I know that you guys have also kind of started to dive into a podcast. Can you tell everybody mm -hmm. about that? Yeah. Way harder than I expected. <laughs> I, I mean, I enjoy the process. It's a lot of fun. Um, it is very time consuming, but it's been a lot of fun. I have our, I think, fifth one ready to roll out here. It's um, a recording of myself, my husband, um, and my sister doing a recording of a bunch of Disney songs. 
um, kind of our high, most highly requested podcast is just like an album, I guess, of us singing Disney songs. <laughs> so yeah, it's cute. It's coming out. We've done, I think, five so far. Um, it's been a lot of fun. You know, it's a good time for me and my family to hang out and do something Disney Chris related that's not, you know, processing pins or, you know, right. doing lives or something like that. It kind of expands the fun into something else. Right. Because you guys do, is it one or two a week at the, the live sales? We do one a week for sure, but sometimes it's split into two different days. Got it. Yeah. Just depending on our schedule and who can be there, who can't. Right. Oh, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Because they're a pretty big deal. They're, they're a big deal. They're a lot of work, a lot of effort. So uh, we need a bunch of hands there to be able to do the shows. Right. Yeah. So final question. Mm-hmm. If you were talking to a brand new person who's aspiring to be a pen creator, what are three things or tips that you would give them? Absolutely. Um, number one is grow your following. Uh, spend some time building up your following. Spend some time creating your community of people who like the same things you do. Um, that is the number one thing hardest for brand new pen makers is reaching that pre sell. So I would say spend a lot of time building your community and finding your following. Um, that's the number one thing I would do. Um, the, the next thing, step number two would be, you know, find the artist and the manufacturer that work well with you. And don't just because you commissioned an art with one artist, if it's not everything you want and you guys can't get to what you want, spend the time, wait longer, find another artist and remake the art. Don't put something into production you're not absolutely in love with. And it's okay. It's okay to say, okay, that one wasn't right. And this isn't the artist that I'm going to use. They're a great artist, but her and I, or him and I don't totally work 100%. I'm going to go find a different one. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You're, it's your creation. So you want to make sure that it's 100% what you love. And so then also find the manufacturer that does the same. Do I communicate well with them? Um, do we create well together? I have manufacturers that I've been working with and we have such good relationships that they'll be like, I think you're missing this. You proved it, but look at this. You, I don't think you saw this, or this isn't usually what you like. Or So finding someone you know you can, uh, can communicate well with, even if it's your first pin, you know down the line, you and them are going to have a good working relationship with each other and um, can really work well and stuff like that. So step one, grow your following. Step two, make sure you find the artist who manufacture you really love and you can really connect with and really communicate well with. And then step three is spend time editing. Do not rush the edit phase. When you get a picture of, you know, a sample and it's one of the points in production, really dive in, make sure the colors are all right. Make sure everything is, is in a line, make sure all the cutouts are right. Make sure the mold is right, everything like that. And then your art before it even goes into production, make sure that that's like exactly what you're looking for. Cause there's no turning back unless you want to pay for another mold. So, uh, really spend the time with your edits. That makes sense. And those are really amazing tips. And then I just kind of have a fourth one. Okay. Customer service, I think is huge for every single pin maker. Make sure you spend time responding to people. Make sure you spend time giving updates. It's so important, especially right now with everyone on edge about makers and things like that. Just really make sure you're updating people and being transparent. That's like huge. That's probably like an overarching one. Just be transparent, communicate, and then do those three things. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I'll leave links to everything down below in the description so people can find you. and. I really appreciate this time with you. Of course.